Welcome to another episode of Norfolk Mountains. Today we're in Thetford Forest having a look at the Desert Rats Memorial. So, no time to waste. Come on, let's go. This video special is about the Chindits. They were tasked to carry out guerrilla warfare in the jungles of Burma. We dedicate this film to the last Chindit, Arthur Rollins, who passed away in October this year, aged 104. May he rest in peace, and we will remember them. We're here now with Bill, who's uh, going to tell us a story about the Chindits and uh, what they got up to. But more importantly, he's wearing his dad's shorts. I'm not. There you go. Now the Chindits were just basically a bunch of picked men. One or two did volunteer in the very early on first expedition. That was Operation Longcloth and then it was Operation Thursday was the second one. So my dad missed the first one because unfortunately or fortunately depend how you look at it, he had malaria, he was in hospital. But he made the second one. On that second one they were put into gliders and on the night of March the 5th when they flew into a, a place named as Broadway with the gliders, 62 gliders took off and 38 made it. My dad was fortunate, he was one of the 38 gliders that made it. He never ever wanted to fly again. He then spent three and a half months behind the Japanese lines. They were hopefully going to be supplied every day with the K rations, which were an American product but really you were only supposed to survive on these things for about three to four weeks at a time. And there was one occasion when they went for nine days without a resupply, because every day they were supposed to fly over the hump known as the Himalayas to us and be resupplied by the Americans with their Dakotas. They also got resupplied with boots, uniforms, ammunition, water, food for the mules, and even mules were parachuted out of a Dakota. I met a chap some years ago who was a kicker, as what the supply boys were called on the aircraft. They would kick the supplies out and they had a mule that would not jump. They would put three mules onto, a glo onto the Dakota and this mule wouldn't go. So they went and told the American pilot who come back with a big cigar on and he put the cigar on the mule's backside and the mule jumped. Quite how you teach a mule to bend four <laughs> legs when it lands on a parachute, I really don't know. It did have three parachutes. Anyway, I digress. Um, water was dug out of the ground from dried up Changs riverbeds. That's streams to us, not Changs. So what they did then, they put water into old inner tubes and then they would throw that out of the aircraft if they were going to get resupplied along with the K ration. Sacks of rice would free fall and one or two guys were unfortunate enough to be hit by a sack of rice and die. So you got killed from your rations. You slept on the ground, you had no tents, you had one blanket, which I've got in my kit. I've got full chindit kit on now. We carry your mess tins. There's your eating irons in there. KFS to some people. How long was your dad on station then? On the... Well, once they were behind the lines, they were behind the lines for three and a half months. Three and a half months? Yep. And was that just one tour behind the line, or did they recover and then go back? No, you, once you were behind, you were behind. Yeah. And as the war progressed and we were slowly beating the Japanese, and of course the jungle, although the jungle was neutral, you still had to contend with the leeches. The most leeches we know of on one man was 72. 72? 72 leeches. Yeah. The only way of getting the leech off is a hot cigarette or salt but you wouldn't waste the salt on getting the leech off. If you pulled it off, you would pull the body from the head and the head would keep going. Yeah. And when my dad died, he was nearly 80, and there was still the head of a leech just below his left knee. Blimey, there you go. Yeah. And Friend for life. Yeah. So the Tindits are often missed in history, really, aren't they? They are known they were... as the Forgotten Army because the war in Europe had been over since May and they were still fighting the Japanese up until allegedly the uh, 15th of August, which is VJ Day, 
but because it took so long to get the message up country to the columns that were behind the lines, they were still killing each other two, three weeks after that. Yeah. Never give up. If you were unfortunate enough to join the RAF and became a signaller and you were attached to a Chindik column, they had batteries, generating sets, and you would have to string possibly something as long as 300 feet, an aerial wire, through the trees to get a signal over the hump yeah. to be resupplied with ammunition, boots, weapons. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks very much. That's uh, right. absolutely fascinating. Dad survived the war and lived fascinating. nearly 80. Yeah, that's the best bit, isn't it? Because yeah. you, you wouldn't be here to tell us that fantastic no, that's right. story. We've got some brilliant stories recorded for today, and that's absolutely brilliant. So uh, I've had a good day. I've had a good day. I found out what the chindits are, and so will you. And I wouldn't want to leech. <laughs> OK. So, don't forget to like and subscribe. Press that button. See you soon on Norfolk Mountains. Ha <laughs> ha!